the folks over at Drio sent me a portable air conditioner to show you guys. It's what I've always wanted. I've always wanted an air conditioner for the workshop because it gets brutally hot in the summer. And when I say brutally hot, it sometimes gets up to 36, 37 degrees Celsius in the workshop. It's unbearable. So an air conditioner for the shop, it's a welcome addition, but I have to install it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to install it and we're going to give it the power that it needs to operate efficiently. Let's check it out. Well, what do we have here? Folks over at Drio have sent me a portable air conditioner for my shop. That was mighty nice of them. Let's unbox it and take a look at this unit. I'll just have to find room to put it, but uh, I'm thinking over in the corner and then I can vent it outside. First things first though, I have to remove the straps. And I should be able to lift the box off of it and start the unpacking. Okay, here's the unit now that it's been unboxed. It's on wheels, so you can weave it around. I got it up on the bench. These are not particular lightweights, but a person, one person can manage it. I lifted it up on the bench, no problem. On the back here, you've got the vent. What is this for? This is the continuous drain for when you're using it as a dehumidifier. A drain? It drains into a bucket. A drain hose? I don't know, I'll have to read the instructions. How to drain water. Obviously, oh, there'll be a, probably a drain down here. Air conditioners do pull moisture out of the air and they will collect water, so you do have to drain them from time to time. It's kind of a neat feature, a magnetic remote control holder. Yes, the unit has a remote control with a LCD screen. Just have to load a couple batteries in here, which we'll be doing. It has a magnetic holder to hold the remote control in place so that you don't misplace it when you're not using it. That's kind of neat. These units are designed to be installed with the vent facing out a window, which I'm not going to be doing here because, well, I don't have a window to vent it out of. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to uh, probably put a cut a hole into the uh, into the attic and vent the hot air up into the attic. But it does come with all these adapter plates for different windows, which uh, can probably be adjusted. Let's just open it up and take a look at them. For you know window installation, you've got. An adjustable adapter for your, your different size windows but normally you put this in your window and you adjust it to fit the width of your window and then tighten it down and the vent hose then attaches into here that's to blow the hot air that is removed from the room outside to cool so all portable air conditioners do require a vent the vent on the bottom or the back of the unit is right here so you connect the exhaust hose to here this is where the hot air is going to be exhausted so your vent hose goes from here to the outside. In my case, just cut a hole into the uh, into the ceiling and blow the hot air up into the attic. It also comes with a second panel for larger windows so that you can fill the gap because your window will be open a few inches for the vent. So this will here expand for larger windows. Of course, it also comes with bags of weather stripping just to maintain an airtight seal telescopic vent hose do that it will actually open up and I can stretch it out this would normally go to your window or I don't know how long this is so I'm going to stretch it up I may have to get a longer one for here but this stuff is pretty easy to obtain just see if I got enough here I might have to say I may have to go to the the local hardware store and get some uh, a longer piece just so they can make it up to the ceiling but we'll see how long this one is well I extended the vent hose is about five feet tall or five feet long, I should say. <laughs> uh, so that way uh, you can locate within your, your vent window within five feet with the attached vent. And if you need a longer one, again, this is readily available at your local home hardware store, or Home Depot, or wherever you buy your building materials. You can just get this type of, and it doesn't even have to be rigid like this, but you can get your own if you need a longer a hose for this. The unit itself has two drains. This one, if it has an internal um, pan inside, so it will collect the water, but if you need to drain it, you can place your drip tray below and open this, and then the water will drain. 
if you want to have continuous draining you can always connect a hose to here remove this one and just connect a regular standard water hose to here and run that to your drain so if you're installing it in an area where you have access to a drain you can drain it this way otherwise you have to drain it manually when it fills up and it will shut off and tell you when it needs to be drained so if you're in a humid environment you might want to consider putting in a full-time drain this tape is just to keep covers on for filters and so forth so I'm not going to bother removing that just yet I want to get the unit functional so I can try it out and then I'll install it and we'll get it installed and get it operational here in the workshop I'm trying to find a good location to put it I think I'm going to put it over in the corner but um, I've got to find a place to install it and I'm going to go and get a longer hose so that I can make that attachment permanently and the plug itself has its own GFI protector on it so you can't replace this if, if you uh, damage the cord you actually have to contact the manufacturer to get a replacement cord I'm going to plug it in now we're going to turn it on just on the bench just to see how it performs and then I will install it at some point a little bit later on and uh, we'll get the unit fully functional here in the workshop it's not quite hot enough yet for air conditioning but it's going to get hot and like every year it gets so bloody hot in here that an air conditioner will certainly be welcome in the shop Okay, I have this unit plugged into my kilowatt meter. Let's turn it on. I guess we just tap the, the button there. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? Events open up automatically. And I can change the temperature. Now it says it takes um, about three minutes before the compressor comes on. Oh, the vents are going to actually cycle up and down to blow the air around. Isn't that neat? So let's give it a minute for the uh, compressor to kick in. Right now, let's take a look at how many watts this thing is drawing. I'll get a shot of the watt meter. So with the fan running by itself, it's drawing only 45 watts. Although once the, the compressor kicks in, we're going to see that go much higher. This is a 14,000 BTU, I believe is what it said on the box. So it's a good size air conditioner. This will cool down a good size room for sure. It'll certainly cool down my uh, workshop. I'm gonna to have to rejig my power outlets in here because right now I've got I've got uh, two separate runs going to the same outlet, but I can separate them and put them on two separate breakers, so I can actually have two 15 amp circuits, top side of the plug and bottom side of the plug, which was how it was wired for the bench plugs when I built the place. I wired it for two 15 amp circuits, but I never connected it that way. I've only ever needed one, so I guess I'll have to put that second breaker in and have a separate circuit so that I can run the air conditioner by itself on one circuit and all my other bench power equipment on the other. Now you can turn off the swinging louvers. There's a button here to turn them on and off. Right now they're cycling. If I tap that it shows you that they're off. I can also do it from the remote control which I can also set the temperature on. So I can do everything on here from the, uh, I can change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius as well. I'll turn the temperature down. It tells me on the remote. Nice, I like that. That's a great little remote control. You can control everything. And um, fan speed, probably. Low, medium, and high. Let's see, the high speed or low. turn off the light so I can have it lit up or not that's nice that thing turns off the beeper so now if I now it doesn't beep you see turn off the beeper turn it on there's a button on here for controlling the beep I just thought of something it's probably not I gotta turn the temperature down on here because I don't think it's you gotta turn the temperature down to 65 because it's not not warm enough in here right now for the uh, air conditioner to even turn on because it does have a thermostat in it and uh, it's 18 in here now I, oh it's, it's 15 in here right now and this is set for 18 so it's not going to turn on the compressor no, it's smart it's not going to turn on the compressor because it's not warm enough in here just yet but it will be warm enough a little bit later on so maybe we'll be able to demo 
the actual air conditioning feature because right now it's just going to operate as a fan you can also control it from your phone as well there's an app that you can download it tells you the app here you can download the app at the app store you hold the button for five seconds to start the, the Wi-Fi connection process and then you would add the device and control it over Wi-Fi um, that would be good if you want to program it so you can start it remotely so you can log in probably remotely and start it I'm not going to bother with the app right now because for me I don't myself I'm not a big app fan I don't like using a lot of apps for things personally I just prefer to turn it on with a remote or turn it on with a button and be done for those of you that do want to set the Wi-Fi you just hold the button here for five seconds and these are actual they're not they're, they're, they're just touch sensitive buttons and that turns on the Wi-Fi pairing and then you'll find it on the phone if you go into your Wi-Fi settings and it shows up right there but again I'm not going to use the Wi-Fi setup or the app in this installation for someone who's setting this up in their home though that might be to their advantage because then they can set up timers to have the unit turn on at specific times and turn off at specific times and control it from their phone from a different room so if you've got it in your bedroom for example you could turn it on from your living room before you head to bed to cool the bedroom down before you go to bed that's the whole purpose of having the app so you don't have to go and operate it right at the machine or using the remote control which of course is infrared so it, you need to be in the same room but that's the whole the whole idea behind using the app but uh, right now I'm not going to have much luck in getting this thing going so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mosey off to the building supply store and get myself some vent pipe so that I can put this thing in and uh, get it properly vented so that when the weather does get hot I'll be able to use it. I've kind of got it over in the corner where it's going to be. I got to go now and get some uh, vent hose and we'll get the vent hooked up so that once it warms up here I'll be able to uh, use it. All right I've pretty much finished my installation. I've attached the vent. The vent goes all the way up to the ceiling. I put a hole in the ceiling. Just attach the window plate below the ceiling where the hole is because it doesn't need to be pretty. This is a permanent installation. I use the existing rigid pipe just to go over a bit so I'm going to zap tie it to the uh, the, the vent or the, the vacuum pipe so it'll run straight down the vacuum pipe and then the gray extension I picked up into the back of the AC and now I have air conditioning in the shop let's turn it on there we go on Oh, that's going to work great. Now, again, it's not hot enough yet. It's almost hot enough. It might be hot enough today for the compressor to actually come on, but that's going to be great. Now, the next thing I need to do is just wire the outlet back so that I've got two separate circuits. So I've got an upper and a lower. Run the AC on the lower. The central vac will be on the upper, which will be a separate circuit. And the same with my my bench test equipment run my bench test equipment and monitors and stuff off the circuit that the AC is not on and that way I don't have to worry about tripping any circuits like for example if I have the AC on and I need to use my heat gun for example the heat gun will have its own circuit I'll plug it into the top outlet the AC will be on the bottom so next I gotta go over and get to the electrical panel and uh, we'll rewire the panel that will be interesting. I'll do it without even shutting off the lights. Because the lights are on yet another circuit. I have three circuits in here. I have one circuit for the lights. And there's a couple of outlets on the far wall that are on that circuit. And the garage door opener, for example. And I have another circuit that the bench plugs were on, the four bench plugs. I actually had two circuits. So I had two circuits so I could have 220 at a plug if necessary, which never needed that. But I had it wired so that I could wire a plug as a 240 outlet and uh, or two 120s as I say a few years ago oh I guess around 2011 
when I got my car charger I rewired it because I, I really didn't need split outlets in the workshop but now I do anyway let's uh, go wire it up shut it off and maybe by then it'll be warm enough in here that the uh, AC can come in uh, can kick in and then I'll get some zip ties and kind of tidy up that uh, pipe and the way I've got it set now is like in the winter for example if I'm going to disconnect it I can just unconnect the pipe and just push it up this that gray pipe will collapse first things first I need to turn off the power to the circuit I'm going to be working on now, if you're wondering what all the extra plugs are here for that's for my garage heat so the uh, outlet I need to shut down is the outlet for the um, where is it here gotta find it okay bench bench plug I believe bench and central yeah it's number 36 uh, that should be I guess this one here 36 what's 34 34 is a soffit plug so I can steal one off that so that will turn off the power which it does to my monitor and stuff so I know that the the power is down now for the the plugs I'm working on the other one I'm going to use is the soffit plug which is that one and that's all that's all that's on there this is the 244 the uh, plug up here for the car charger and the garage heat and this is the other one for the other car so these are the two breakers I need to use and basically I'm going to transfer this will have two wires going into it it'll have the red and the black I'm going to transfer them over so one goes on the soffit plug soffit plugs are only used to run Christmas lights basically and they're LEDs so we don't have to worry about the soffit plugs yeah soffit plugs I think that's all that's on there soffit plugs and the lights outside which are uh, they're LEDs so we can put one of them on that circuit I'll just unbolt the panel now and we'll get in there and do some rewiring now I warn people if you don't know what you're doing stay the hell out of your electrical panel because this is a 125 amp uh, 240 volt panel and if you don't know what you're doing it could kill you that's you're being forewarned I guess I have to probably take down this as well because this is in the way to my hook for my charger for my car just move that out of the way so I can get the panel down get the cover off I screwed it in right at the edge so that it would go into a stud to hold it so that's out of the way So here's our dog's breakfast, also known as the electrical panel. So right now, and I'll get the camera over so you can see what I'm, I'm talking about because it's a bad angle. These are the two breakers I'm working on. You can see the one breaker that's got the red and the black wire going to it. I'm going to remove the red or the black wire, I should say, and I'm going to connect it to the one below, which actually goes to this, this uh, marette here. So we're going to pigtail it on because there's already two wires here. We're going to pigtail this black wire here onto this one that'll put that half of the circuit with this other breaker and then the red one will be this one here by itself that's the progress that we're going to do so i only have to remove this one screw on this one and remove that one wire i don't have to touch this one because it's already got a pigtail things to keep in mind as you observe my electrical panel this was not wired by a professional this was why I did this. Uh, this is my work, right? This is my fancy work. Yeah, I know. I've got a wire running around here that was for the car charger. But when the house was built, I hired an electrician to pull in the, the, the wiring. But the electrician was taking his sweet time to come in and terminate anything. He just brought a bunch of wires in here, just left them hanging. And while I was renovating my house, I had to get the project moving along because I had like one outlet actually working so I wired the panel I balanced the load I wired the panel that's yeah, yeah it's, don't worry about it. this this one by the way was done by a professional when I added an addition a professional added this one um, you can see his work is not any neater than mine but um, I wired the panel and then an inspector came in and inspected it 
and gave me a clean bill of health. So my panel wiring is, my electrical skills apparently are acceptable for the BC Electrical Code because this was all inspected and was passed. And um, the only thing that was added since then, uh, this outlet, this one was added after the fact. And it was put in right on top here because I knew there was no wires going up through the panel there. I guess what I could do is I could probably cut this box in and mount it right into the wall, but I just, that one I just surface mounted it. Right, I could cut that in and mount that box in the wall, but I just surface mounted it. I put it there because there's no, there no wires going up the panel, right? So I had a space to put it. That was for my 240 volt 30 amp circuit for my uh, my heater and my car charger. But uh, everything else on here is uh, has been written off to code. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, you know some of you might some of you armchair electricians might not agree. Yeah, this one here probably wasn't a code. I did this after the fact. So power's off. We're going to remove. Might help if I put the right bit on the screwdriver. We're going to remove the black wire that's currently also going in here. I'll remove both of them because they are twisted together because as a good electrician you always twist your wires. We're going to untwist the red and black that feeds the upper and the lower outlets for the outlet that I need to separate. And we're going to replace The wire back into the breaker for now half of the bench plugs so let's do that let's dress the wire and put it back into the breaker here and tighten it down okay that is done while I'm at it I'll just make sure that everything else is tight because you know sometimes screws tend to to work their way a bit loose after they've been sitting for a while this one's live but it's tight okay uh, next time next thing I'm going to open up this morette this is also turned off as you can see the power is off we're going to open up this morette and we're going to add that wire to the connection here I know I don't probably need to warn you guys but maybe I should don't get into your electrical panel unless you know exactly what you're doing and turn off the power. Now I've only turned off the power on the two circuits that I'm working on. The rest of that panel is live. So obviously I'm keeping my fingers away from it. But if you don't know what you're doing, contact a professional electrician. Contrary to what some people think in my jurisdiction, you are permitted to work on your own wiring, but I can't do this on anybody else's home because I'm not licensed, but I can work in my own house. Now remember the rest of this panel is live. So I have to be careful that I don't get my fingers into areas that are still energized. But I know what circuits are live and which ones are dead, so I can safely operate. And we're going to twist these wires together and then put the morette on. It's important that you always get a good physical bond. Don't rely on your wire nut to hold everything together. You need a good, strong physical bond first. The morette is just to keep the wires from touching anything else and to keep them together. But they do need to be bonded first. Screw down the morette. Put the wires back in so they're not going to get pinched against anything. You'll notice when I'm doing this that my other hand is not touching anything that could be grounded, such as the, the, the outside of the, the electrical panel, which is grounded. I am wearing insulated shoes, rubber boots or rubber shoes that are insulated, and I'm keeping my second hand away from anything that could complete an electrical circuit. In this case, I'm resting on the drywall. I could put it in my pocket, same thing. As long as I'm not touching anything metal, I can't get a shock. So I push the wires in place, make sure nothing's going to touch, and then I can close the panel back up and put the screws into it, and I've now created two separate circuits. And what I need to do now is I need to make sure that these circuits will be tied together like I've done over here, so that when one trips, it will trip the other. That way you can't have half an outlet on and the other half of the outlet off. 
if the breaker trips it will trip both and that's why we tie them together which I'll be doing with a piece of copper wire like was done here just because I don't have any of these little breaker uh, joiners like that like that's shown over here Place the screws in the, the cover and this job will be done well not quite I still have to put the breaker joiner in to join the two breakers together and I'll just use a piece of copper wire for that the final thing to do of course is to provide a link bar between the two oh there's a bee buzzing around me here just a piece of number 10 wire will do the job something that you can I guess I got to make it a little straighter than that but this is just number 10 type ground wire solid copper wire just something to provide a physical link so that when, if one breaker trips, the other one will go off as well. So then we can just bend the other side of it down here. Carefully, not to break the breaker. Uh, bad pun. Bad pun! Bad pun! Don't want to break it because the plastic will break if you twist it too hard. So just as long as it has clearance where it won't affect another breaker if it trips. Something like that. So now I can turn the circuit on. You'll hear the vacuum kick in momentarily. See now if one were to trip, it's going to trip the other one with it. Okay, let's check our let's check our power here. If I unplug both the vacuum and the air conditioner, I should have 120 volts on the meter on both sides between neutral and hot. 120 volts. And the other side here, neutral and hot. 120 volts. And if I measure between the two hots, which is the two short plugs, I have 240 volts. We have two circuits. You see, I could wire, I could put a plug in here that's a 240 volt plug. And that's why I wired the garage like I did when I built the place. I wired the bench outlets so that I had the option of having either 120 or 240. Or I guess I could even put a, a double plug in put a double box in and have a 240 and a 120. So I've wired it so I can have both. So now I have both systems are on a separate circuit. Plug in the vacuum cleaner. Plug in the air conditioner. There's four outlets in the garage that are wired this way, plus three more that are on their own circuit with the lights. Over here on the workbench, I have two power bars, one that's powering up things like my monitor and stuff but not my bench power my bench power is on the top outlet which has got my amplifier and this power bar here which is my bench power if I unplug this you'll see that the light will go out that's my bench power so my bench power is on one breaker which is the same breaker that the central vac is on and the same breaker that if I plug my heat gun in because I have another outlet that I always use the top side for my heat gun or a portable heater if I'm running the portable heater it's always on the top side. The bottom side now has my other equipment. It, it has my monitor and scope and stuff on it. This monitor is plugged into the bottom outlet, which is the same one that the AC will be on. Once again, thanks goes out to Drio for sending me this air conditioner so that I could show you guys how to set one up and how to install it. And again, I did mine more of it's a permanent installation here. Normally one of these units you would install it in your window and take it down in the winter. For me this is going to be a permanent installation, although I could move it in the winter. I could disconnect the hose and just move the thing or I'm not going to be using it. But again, it would be really handy to have because I have to work in here in the summer when it's blazing hot and I know how hot it gets. It gets upwards of 36, 37 degrees Celsius here working in the workshop and even with the door open it doesn't help. So having an air conditioner in here that I can turn on, I'm wondering if it's going to be warm enough to, come for, to turn on. We'll see. I think it's around that temperature now, so it might kick in. We'll give it a few minutes, see if the compressor would kick in. I'd love to be able to demo that. I'll give it turned on here. We'll give it a few minutes to see if it's going to kick in. But uh, I'll throw the link for this in the description. Excellent. The compressor kicked in. Let's see how nice and cool 
the uh, air is and again I can turn those deflectors they're on cycling now but they can be turned off so with the remote control if I don't want the air deflectors deflecting the air to different to different locations if I just want to say have them facing straight up I can turn them off so they'll stay open like that you can see the pipe at the back is now you can see it moving because there should be warm air going up that pipe now as it's extracting heat from here let's just see how cool the air is oh yeah and the air coming out the back here I can feel the air I can feel the pipe already getting warm so we know that it's pulling heat out and putting that hot air up into the attic where it will vent out through the soffits so now I'm just going to go grab some zip ties and I'm going to tie this cable or tie this pipe up out of the way so it doesn't get uh, caught on anything and this install is done and I can just kind of turn it around where I want it and kick the air right where I'm working this will blast it right over to my work, work area this is going to be great so I'm going to get a shot of the kilowatt hour meter it's drawing 39 watts with the fan only on we'll wait till the compressor starts up again I had to shut it off in order to plug the um, the watt hour meter in so the compressor is going to go through its five minute reset cycle and then once the compressor comes back on we'll be able to measure how much power this is running or drawing in watts okay compressor is running as you can see the unit is drawing 857 watts so that's roughly well but what a coffee pot, a little dust. 875 watts, call it that, even if you rounded it up to 900 watts, which is, it might if I turn the fan up full. Let's turn the fan up. Kick the fan up to full speed. And where's my fan button? Okay, fan to full speed. Seems to be settling in around, uh, well, 1,050 watts. So just a little bit over 1,000 watts. And that's the primary reason why I wanted to make sure that this was on its own circuit by itself air conditioners really should be on their own circuit I know it's not possible in a lot of uh, installations in homes um, you're sharing a circuit just keep that in mind if you're running an air conditioner that uh, you are using a good portion of the branch circuits limit which is typically around 1500 watts I think 1800 on a 15 amp circuit at 120 volts so we're getting there but um, keep that in mind 1000 watts is what this thing's gonna draw it puts out 1400 BTUs it's going to cool your room down pretty quick and I can already feel this in the in the workshop here it's not that hot today it's only been running for a few minutes I can already feel the temperature dropping so it's going to be nice to have this this summer I can't wait link is in the description thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one bye